Alright, what is going on my dudes? We're back here today with the newest champion entering MCOC, and we got a pretty darn big boy here today. We got Onslaught. Now man, this guy is is kind of insane. His character model is unfreaking believable, dude. Look at those claws. Look at those shoulder pads. He's got like a beetle thing in the back. Insane. Um, but yeah, this guy is, is kind of nutty. He's coming in hot. He has the number one prestige. He has a lot going on. He's going to be a ridiculous defender. He has some very interesting things on offense as well. We're going to break it all down today. I'll show you some gameplay. You know how it works. All right. So, uh, Onslaught, his first light, his first medium, and his heavy attack do not make contact with the opponent. It doesn't say heavy here, but just trust me. Okay. Um, on top of that, this is kind of nuts right here. Incoming bleed, incinerate, and shock potency is reduced by 150%. Now, that goes for passives, that goes for debuffs, right? So, for example, Mephisto's Aura, EMP Modification, stuff like that, okay? Uh, instant bleeds, stuff like that will not do any damage to him, is, is essentially what that means. Um, his debuffs gain 50% increased ability accuracy against skilled champions. That essentially means that he can ignore the Tranquilize that Mantis has on defense 100% of the time, unless she uses a special three. Um, Onslaught's debuffs, I just said that. Now, if a personal debuff or the stun from the parry mastery is purified, or prevented due to a debuff immunity, reinflict the debuff as a passive. Now that is very interesting. So nodes like right back at it in Alliance War, right? Like when you knock them down and they go debuff immune, you can still parry them. So it's like you have a white mags pre-fight on him all the time when you need it. Um, so that's really nice. Also, of course, you know, Taskmaster goes debuff immune, um, which of course, you know, he's not the hardest defender in the world, but it's just a nice skill uh, or mutant skill relationship there. Um, Crush, this is mostly a defensive ability. This makes him pretty rough on defense. Basically, when you're fighting him and you go above 10 in your combo meter, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? It's gonna be a crush charge, and when he starts an attack, whether it be a special attack or a basic attack, it's gonna convert that charge into a crush debuff, and crush makes it so that you can't really block attack, so it'll just hit right through your block, all right? So he's, he's pretty annoying on D. Now, Daunted, this is a new effect, Daunted. Um, when either champion well-timed blocks, you inflict an indefinite Daunted debuff of 15% potency, maxing out at 10 stacks. Now, Daunted increases the damage taken from all special attacks by the given potency, okay? So if you watch the deep dive or the clip on the live stream, you may have noticed that you build up to a big special 2 degen, right? And the damage is crazy during the special 2, and the damage spikes during the special 1. That's because of the Daunted, all right? Now, while Daunted is active, Onslaught disables the opponent's willpower mastery. So that makes him annoying on defense as well, right? but also very useful on offense in PvP content. So you don't have to worry about them them healing from willpower ever as long as you get one parry off at the beginning of the fight, all right? Um, Neuroshock. So this is what Danny Moonstar has, okay? He has a lot more of it. So either champion's attacks have a chance, a 15% chance to inflict a Neuroshock passive, dealing some energy damage over 12 seconds. Critical hits and unblockable special attack hits, this goes up to 40%, right? But against skill champions, it goes up to 95%. So if you crit a skill champion, right? Or if a skill champion hits you with the critical hit, there's almost a 100% chance you're going to inflict a Neuroshock, all right? Now, if you're fighting Onslaught, dashing backwards, kind of like fighting Toad, you remove a Neuroshock, has a cooldown of like two seconds, but it does not work if you're a metal champion. Now, while suffering from shock, incinerate, plasma, or cold snap, you inflict a Neuroshock on the opponent every one second. So, not only does he reduce the potency of incinerate and shock by 150%, he also, one every second, puts a Neuroshock on the opponent when he's suffering from those effects. So nodes like Hazard Shift and Alliance War, he's going to be one of the best options for because you just combo up to Special 2 and have a good time. All those Neuroshocks, all right? Now, his heavy attack, um, his heavy attack is very important to his loop, okay? It also has some very nice range, but the final hit pauses all damaging effects. That's for the Neuroshocks and the Special 2 G Gen for 1.5 seconds. If the opponent is not suffering from a stun debuff, that goes for 
10 seconds instead, okay? So stun passive against Kingpin, Korg, Atuma, Hitmonkey, Mole Man, right? Whenever they shrug, they're gonna turn into a passive, right? Or you can bait a heavy, or you can counter a special with your heavy, or you can parry, wait a second, and then use the heavy right when the stun's expiring. Lots of stuff you could do, you have to play around with it, but that's what you wanna do. You wanna heavy while they're not inflicted by a stun debuff, all right? Now, special one, each hit has 100% chance, plus a fat, flat 50% chance to inflict a personal Neuroshock passive and an organic magnetism debuff. Now, organic magnetism, it reduces the ability accuracy on the opponent by the given potency. So 2.6% potency for 16 seconds, right? Maxing out at eight stacks. So basically a little bit more than like 20% ability accuracy reduction, which could be like, okay, right? I think that there is like a really good use for that does it like prevent mole man from like evading ev or, or or purifying ever something like that against mutants i don't know I, I remember there was a targeted use for the potency i'm forgetting off the top of my head um but um what's interesting is that can actually be increased by over eight because if somebody right if, if you're fighting I don't know, Kingpin, right, for example, right? And he purifies all eight of them and you get eight passives. If you throw another special one and you have eight debuffs, right? Let's say he doesn't purify any of them, just an example, you could have more. So the stack limits in this kit, Daunted and this, they can go above the stack, right? So you have a max of eight debuffs, a max of eight passives. Pretty interesting, all right? While this effect is active, your um, special one costs 33% less power, and on defense, more likely to activate it, okay? Um, and yeah, just if the duration of the debuff is reduced by any means, on expiration, it reinflicts itself as a passive, okay? So that's like, you know, Craven reduces non-damaging debuffs, stuff like that, and also if it's purified. All right, special two, pretty simple. On activation, you inflict a delirium debuff. Cool, right? Um, but more importantly, on hit, replace replace all neuroshocks with degen passives, right? Um, up to 20 of them. Now, this only lasts for six seconds, but you can keep it paused indefinitely, right? And that's what you want to do. And the degen's pretty spicy. The special three is interesting. It inflicts a stun passive for three seconds, and it costs less power based on how many neuroshocks are on the opponent, right? But more importantly, it inflicts 20 neuroshock passives on the opponent. So you can just kind of ramp all the way up. If you get shot to special three, right, 20 Neuroshocks, um, they're passively stunned, throw a heavy attack, right? That way you can um, pause it right away, go in and punish, make your way to special two, DJ. Now, let's talk about his sick ability really quick before we jump into gameplay today. Onslaught can block unblockable special attacks from skill champions, right? Um, his, his daunted potency is increased by 33%. That's really great for his like degen moment. And for each non-damaging debuff or personal non-damaging passive on the opponent, Onslaught's special attacks gain increased block penetration. So that's daunted, um, that's organic magnetism, that kind of thing, right? So that's Onslaught. He's... he's He's kind of insane. He's kind of insane. He, he does some really insane things. Um, he has some cool synergies too. Gets a lot of block efficiency here from Sentinel. Um, you get a crush charge on offense with Apocalypse. Um, against With Red Skull, Red Onslaught, nice little comic throwback there. Against skill champions while attacking Onslaught passively, regens 85% of incoming physical damage. That's nice for like, you know, fighting a Tuma. You don't have to worry about just doing medium and light. Um, and Killmonger and Korg and all that fun stuff. Um, but also with their recovery mastery that goes up as well. So yeah, and Red Skull's really good now. Close enough, striking an opponent or their block while they're unstoppable or consumes three personal daunteds to remove the unstoppable. Cool. And then over here, you just gain some regen after killing a mutant. So, before we jump into the gameplay, I do want to say, I made a list of all of the things that he can counter pretty effortlessly that you don't always think about, but when it's there and to be possible, it's kind of insane. So, Completely counters miss. With Neuroshock, you can't miss. So that's Falter, Missing in Action, Shuri, Professor X, Ebony Maw, etc. Nick Fury is unblockable special one. Kingpin and, and Hitmonkey is unblockable special one. Mephisto's aura damage. Wiccan's defensive neutralized threat. Absorbing Man's oops, I let him refine magma moment. Long shot special one bleed and special two incinerate. Um, Keaton's thorns and increased bleed potency in Alliance War if you run coagulate. Hazard shift shock and bleed. Hazard shift incinerate and shock. 
Hazard Shift Incinerate and Poison, Biohazard, Shock Tether, Trial by fi uh, Fire, EMP Modification, Some Reverse Controls, because of Psychic Shielding Tag. Um, right back at it. Don't have to worry about the debuff immunity. Um, he's gonna go wild on Power Shield. Those champs who evade when stunned, like Kate Bishop and whatnot. Um, you block all healing with Despair after seven parries indefinitely. You immediately block PvP Willpower with one parry. He can't be parried in PvP content due to a late special punish because his medium and light are non-contact. He has non-contact, medium one and light one, for skill Thorners and other non contact interactions, and that is not even including how he completely ignores Purify and Tranquilize and stuff like that. So, the amount of utility in this guy's kit is absolutely absurd when you think about how much damage he has as well, and it gets even nuttier when you realize he has the number one prestige in the entire game. If we just take some of it, just take some of it. And put it like a little bit of it and like into gladiators kit <laughs> all right let's move on so here very relevant here all right we're gonna go right to like an atuma today 220,000 health this is a uh battlegrounds atuma i have to make my face pop up so what you're gonna be noticing here is that against the skill champions who shrug he loves it he loves it he enjoys it right because look at that stun passive that's always there, right? Atuma is shrugging the stun. He is also shrugging our daunted. He's turning them both into passives. That's okay. Now, what you're going to be noticing here is I'm parrying a lot. The block proficiency he has is very good. Now, I am not even going for the special one here. This is a battleground size health pool. I'm going right to special two against an Atuma, right? And look at that. He's dead. He is dead. It's done, all right? That was 225,000 health for an Atuma completely flushed down the toilet. Now, here is a big Atuma, 700,000 health. Is there a big Atuma in content release this month? Hmm, maybe there's one in Necropolis, all right? So, what I'm gonna be doing here is, I'm gonna be going kind of like for the rotation I showed in the deep dive, which is going for the special one first. Now, I did say in the deep dive, oh, you can throw another special one if you want, because it the, the organic magnetism makes it cost less power and that's 100 percent true here's the thing for stuff like war for battlegrounds for casual questing even you're really not going to need more than one special two special one more often than not if it's a champion like dr doom with a lot of crit resist you might want to go for two right but when you crit you're going to be inflicting the neuroshocks right that's how it goes all right so at this point we have almost 20 Neuroshocks. We have all of our Daunted effects, right? All 10. We're going to build up to a special two. This guy is being exceptionally passive here. It's very annoying. I don't know why he's not like... He's standing there and blocking. The AI is a little weird on the CCP beta server sometimes, so ignore that, right? But here at this point, once we get to that special two, it's over, man. So watch the degen damage here. Ticking for 40,000 per second during special attacks. And now, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to simply... Keep a pause for the rest of his life. And not only that, I'm going to be going for the special one here because the daunted effects increase the damage of all or the potency of all damage during special attacks. And that includes the degen when you're throwing your special one. So the damage spike keeps happening over and over and over and over and over and over and over, right? As long as you keep it paused. So here is a kingpin with 500,000 health, all right? Now, kingpin. Is very annoying on defense um, for a lot of reasons. He's very tanky, right? He's healing a lot. So, when you're fighting a kingpin in battlegrounds with this guy, right? After one parry, after that daunted is on the opponent, he will not be regenerating from his rage debuffs. It will not be happening. So that is really nice, and that never goes away, okay? Because that that one daunted passive, that's all it takes. That is all it takes. He will never heal from willpower, okay? And also, he's going to be shrugging the stuns a lot, so you have a very easy way to get, you know, those um, those heavies off while he's not from a stun debuff and everything. He's being passive here as well, but that's totally okay. So yeah, we're just going with the heavy attacks, 19 Neuroshocks. We're setting up for that big special too. Remember, this is 500,000 health. This is like a questing health pool kingpin, a very big one, okay? And now we're going for the special two and watch his health. 
right? Like, we don't even have to go for the heavy attack here. We can just combo up to a special one. Com we don't even, we, right? It's, it's not the point where, like, I'm so used to, like, doing the heavy attacks that I keep doing it. But after that special two, man, you can just combo into a special one. And they're the most, unless they have a million health, they're going to be dead, you know? Like, 750,000 health is, like, where that, like, special two, special one rotation gets him, you know? And if you're using him for higher health pools than that, like, yeah, keep the heavies going. Like, if you're using him in Necropolis, keep the heavies going. But, you know, he's the type of champion where, like, you probably aren't going to use him for, like, those big health pools unless he, like, has those passive stuns, right? But there's, like, Necropolis Atuma, Elsa, Misty, um, Hit Monkey. He's really good for Hit Monkey. Um, if you're still doing Abyss, you know, he'll probably be good for Abyss Korg. Taskmaster, stuff like that. But yeah, the skill champions who shrug, man, that's like his bread and butter for sure. So let's take a look at some of this utility stuff. So this is interesting. You know, this is Shuri. I'm going to purposefully play this very poorly right now. I'm going to get hit just to show you that when there is a shock on you, he's pretty much a hard Shuri counter um, for many reasons. So when there's a shock on you, the neuro shocks are building up and up and up and up and up, right? And they don't stop building up, right? I got hit so that refresh. They don't stop building up, he takes no damage from it whatsoever, and also he can't miss when Neuroshock's active. Watch, I'm trying to bait out a heavy attack, she's not going for it. Look, you can't miss, you can't miss. I have all, I have all 20 Neuroshocks from doing nothing. 20 degens, right? So he counters miss, all miss. That includes like Mysterio stuff, right? And the Neuroshock, it's always active. Even if you're not doing pauses, there's always one Neuroshock active, right? Completely ignore miss. For fighting Mephisto, completely ignore his aura and stuff like that. Like, you just ignore it. You just ignore everything Mephisto has going on here, right? If you get hit by the special one, the incinerate is not going to do damage to you. That's it. It's just not going to do damage to you. Um, here, he counters Absorbing Man in two very unique ways. So, Absorbing Man, one of the threats is his regen after special attacks, correct? After seven parries, the regen's gone, right? So he can't heal from willpower. And also on top of that, you know how like you really don't want Absorbing Man throwing two special twos, refining his magma form? Well, guess what? It doesn't really matter. And I'll show you why. Because look, he's going to throw it right now. And he's not regenerating aside from the recovery mastery because of will because of the the, um, the despair mastery all seven and look at the look at the passive incinerates. They're not doing any damage and they're putting neuroshocks on Absman. Now, when a champion purifies his stuff, it's any purify. Watch that includes King Root, passives, boom, passives. Right. So I just showed you like the despair right with the healing. Same thing here. Once you have like eight, seven, eight debuffs, right? You're gonna cut off the healing, the regen here on King Root, right? So any sort of healing, like Wolverine, that kind of like big healing, just shuts it off with seven parries, man. All right? So I said plus 50% ability accuracy um, on skill champions. Mantis's Tranquilize is 50% at SIG 200. So essentially you just can fight Mantis without anything with him. You just, you ignore it. You ignore the Tranquilize. That's that's what that is, right? Um, here, against Kate Bishop and other champions who evade when they're stunned. Look at that. Passive stun, right? Let's take a look at a fight here. We got Gauntlet Terax. This is just a little bit of fun, all right? Because he's got so much power. Now, I don't know if he has like some energy resistance here. Uh, I haven't done this fight in a while, but I'm not really taking a lot of damage. So here's a little example. Oh, ooh, 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 he dexed backwards. How about that? So you do have to be a little bit careful with that, um, with the with the heavy attacks after after the stun. If you want to get fancy, you got to be careful, all right? But one thing you can do, right? You have to watch out for stand your ground, but you can get them in the corner and do like parry heavy into a, a heavy without the stun, right? But regardless. We're gonna build up to that big degen while he's in the rock field. We're gonna take advantage of that. And look at that, man. Look at his power. Look at what we're doing. We're embarrassing this guy. It doesn't matter. We're gonna put the degen on. And now he's gonna tick down very, very nicely. We're gonna bait out a special attack from him, right? And look at that. We're gonna go right back to the same thing we were doing. Heavy attack, heavy attack, heavy into special one. Come on, give it to me. Give me that special one onslaught. There we go. Look at the degen go up. Yeah. 
And we're gonna repeat. And we're gonna repeat. And of course, this is a seven star versus Gauntlet, right? Gauntlet came out a while ago, but this Terax, he's a juicy Terax, man. He's a very, very juicy Terax, you know? And not just that, Gauntlet Dr. Doom here, you know, he actually got hit by the special too. I liked it. The incinerates are gonna put neuroshocks on him. I thought that was funny, right? But basically, what I'm gonna do against Dr. Doom here is kind of do the same thing we've been doing. I'm gonna build up to 20 neuroshocks, and then I'm gonna use my special um I'm gonna use my special two to get the D gen on. And it's gonna be GG's for this guy, right? Now, this has like the glancing node, but onslaught is extra large, right? Look at this, the organic magnetism here. It actually, <laughs> the organic magnetism actually stopped his aura. So that's fun, right? Here, going for that. We're gonna bait out a heavy. We're gonna go in. We're gonna go ahead and probably bait a special two from him or go right for the heavy. Long reach on that heavy attack. And look at the D-Gen, man. The D-Gen's ticking now on this guy and it's just not gonna stop ticking. And we're gonna keep going for the heavy attacks to pause it. And spoiler alert, he ticks down and he ticks down and he ticks down and he ticks down and he doesn't stop ticking down. And guess what? He drops dead. He just drops freaking dead, dude. So that's Onslaught, man. He's got a lot going on. He really does. He has so much in his kit. The damage is kind of crazy. He's very tanky. He's a real ass on defense, man. And he's got number one prestige. Um, if I were to ever get lucky from pulling a seven star uh, champion from a Paragon, I do hope it's this one. I'm already prepping for it not to be. But that's Onslaught. Um, objectively, he is good. Th that's all there is to it. He is good. Um, he It's just like he, he's, he's, he's tuned very highly, you know? Like, I mean, 150% reduction to the potency of bleed, incinerate, and shock. That's three of the most common defensive elements in the game, man. You know? Um, Non-contacts, mediums, and lights, he can't miss. His damage is crazy. He's unbelievably tanky. He's got number one prestige. The mute, here's the thing. The mutant class, man, it has needed a boost for quite a bit. And this is the boost that it needed. You know, Danny Moonstar was really good. She came out this year. That was the only other mutant that came out this year. It's the best mutant since Kitty. You know, it's not, he's not as good, he's not as broken as Kitty. You know, Kitty's got like the no damage and all that, the stuff and the phasing and everything. And she's so unbelievably busted. Um, but he's very powerful as a two-way champion. It's something that the mutant class has sorely been needing for quite a while. So I think he's gonna be very disruptive on defense and very useful on offense. So I'm excited to see how that shakes out. Uh, yeah, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop your boy a big old like. Let me know what you think about this big, giant, beautiful beetle in the comment section below. And hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos just like this coming to you in the future. I'll be seeing you around, man.